the greatest blessing a pastor can have is to experience a congregation coming alive with excitement about growing in love of God, of neighbor, of self. And to experience the spreading of that love into the community and beyond. There is no other greatest excitement, I think, for a pastor. But it's not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about being a pastoral leader who can enroll the congregation in a vision of what it means to truly be the church and to follow Christ. It's about the awakening of the congregation to be alive in Christ, energized and empowered for ministry. It's about every person a disciple identifying his or her unique gifts and using those gifts for the transformation of the world. It's about claiming the promise of Jesus who said, what I'm about to tell you is true. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. In fact, they will do even greater things. Ben Zander, who was director of the Phil Boston Philharmonic Orchestra, tells of making an amazing discovery after years of conducting orchestras. He said one day it occurred to him, the conductor doesn't make a sound. You see, the conductor is the one whose eyes everyone is on, all eyes are on, who's making grand gestures, whose picture occurs on the front of the CD. But the conductor, am I right? Doesn't make a sound. The conductor depends on his capacity to enroll the people in that orchestra in the conductor's vision of what that music must sound like. And so although the conductor's the one with the baton, the conductor doesn't make a sound. You who are commissioned today, recognized, ordained, are called and gifted. It's been my joy to come and know you through these years of your journey. You have each experienced God's particular claim on your life. along with your gifts for ministry and the evidence of God's grace living within you. That claim has been affirmed. It's been affirmed by your local church. It's been affirmed by your district committee. It's been affirmed by the Board of Ordained Ministry. It's been affirmed by your seminary professors. And just two days ago, it was affirmed by your colleagues, and so you, now you are here. I thank God for each one of you and I cherish the time we've spent together. And I have such hope for the promise that you hold. All that you've already done and all that you will do in the name of Christ. Like the con conductor of the orchestra, however, you don't make a sound. Now that mean, doesn't mean you're not gonna preach. <laughs> Believe me, that doesn't mean you're not gonna preach. But to put it another way, you are nothing except as you are able to allow the Holy Spirit to break loose among the people you serve. Or to put it another way, it's not about you. That's something Moses had to learn. The people were whining and complaining. The people were lost, wandering, hungry, frustrated, aimless. So Moses turns to God, and then Moses whines too. These are the complaints of Moses, according to the uh, Peterson translation. Why are you treating me this way? What did I ever do to deserve this? 
So why do you dump this responsibility of these people on me? I can't do this by myself, it's too much. All these people, if this is how you intend to treat me, do me a favor and kill me. I've had enough, I'm out of here. Whoa, this is Moses. Now, I could stop right here and we could have a come to Jesus meeting and I could ask all of you, clergy and laity, well, how about it? Have you ever said to God, why are you treating me this way? What did I ever do to deserve this? So why, you, why do you dump the responsibility on all these people on me and no one will do a thing? I can't do this by myself, it's too much. Now this is God's answer. Who do you think you are? That you would ever be able to do it alone. Share the work. Identify partners. Share the vision. Share the ministry. This is ministry for all. The Lord said to Moses, bring me 70 of Israel's elders. Bring elders that you know are leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting. Invite them to be part of the prayer team. Include them in disciple Bible study. Encourage them to go on a VIM. I want them to stand there with you. I will come down, I will speak to you there. I will take some of my spirit that is on you and I will put it on them. They will help you carry the people's load. Then you will not have to carry it alone. Moses, it's not about you. I've added some of the words to that scripture patches, by the way. In his book, The Pastor, a Memoir, Eugene Peterson tells of a time of desperation when he had a confrontation with the leaders of the church. Well, it was a meeting, but it was also something of a confrontation. He explained to these leaders his frustration about all he had to do to run the church. He said to these church leaders during their board meeting, I want to be a pastor who prays. I want to be a pastor who reads and studies. This church culture in which we live squeezes all the God sense out of us. Then the leader said to him, well, why don't you just do it? And he said, because I have to run this church. They said, why don't you just let us do it? He said, because you don't know how? They said, it sounds like you're not doing such a good job yourself. Maybe we could learn, trust us. And they did. You see, the church is a people, ministers all. Every single person has gifts, talents, abilities. In Ephesians, as we heard today, and using again Peter's, Peterson's translation, Christ handed, handed out gifts above and below filled heaven with his gifts, filled earth with his gifts. He handed out gifts of apostle, prophet, evangelist, and pastor teacher to train Christ's followers in skilled servant work, working within Christ's body, the church, until we're all moving rhythmically and easily with each other, efficient and graceful, in response to God's Son, fully mature adults, fully developed within and without, fully alive like Christ. In 1 Corinthians, the gifts from God are listed as wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge. To another, faith. To another, gifts of healing. To another, miraculous powers and another prophecy, and to another distinguishing between spirits, and to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another interpretation of tongues. And in Romans, even more gifts, encouragement, generosity, leadership. 
The gifts are abundant. Congregations which have done spiritual gifts inventories report that there's great excitement when people are able to identify their gifts and see more clearly how God can use them. Bishop Dale White has said that the greatest spiritual gift of the pastor is encouragement. That's what pastors are called to do, to help people see in themselves what they perhaps have never seen before and to encourage them to allow those gifts to flower and grow. Why? To achieve some kind of self-help, self-fulfillment? No. The expression of gifts is for the glory of God and for the transformation of the world. And perhaps even more important, the true blessing of being in love with Jesus Christ is in giving that love away. It's in giving that we receive. It, the epitome of selfishness is doing it all for yourself. It's opposite. It's what we are called to do as God's people. And the great good news is this. We don't take this journey alone. This is a remarkable promise which Jesus makes to us. What I'm about to tell you is true. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. Isn't that a powerful statement? Jesus has promised we can do what Jesus has done. And then he goes on to say this. In fact, they will do even greater things. That's because I'm going to the Father and I will do anything you ask in my name then the Son will be gl bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Do we believe that, friends? If we allow Jesus to live within us, there is no limit to what is possible. It really isn't about you. It's about Jesus. It's about being willing to give ourselves away, to realize that we are indeed conducting an orchestra and we don't make a sound. But if we will be open to seeing Christ in every person we encounter and allow them to see Christ in us, what miracles can take place? Anything is possible and beautiful music which is made when people work together, will bring the glory of God and the kingdom of God, which Jesus has promised. And even more, it will bring the fulfillment of the mission of the church, which is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. See, it works. Amen. Amen.